Hey everybody, welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another By Request Song tutorial. Today's session, we're once again digging back into the Beatles catalog with a full breakdown of Get Back from the band's 1970 album, Let It Be. Now I'm also gonna take this opportunity to introduce to you my new guitar. This is an American vintage style 60s Telecaster from Fender. It's got the three tone sunburst and this beautiful double binding, which I'm a real sucker for. So we're gonna hear what this sounds like as I break down George and John's unique guitar parts. I'm gonna get started with a full demonstration of the tune. I want you to see what you can figure out on your own, then you can jump into the instructional segments. Let's get started. One, two, three, four. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started with our intro section. We're in standard tuning, the key of A major. This intro section is only gonna feature George playing a percussive strumming pattern over A major, then going to a G major, then a D major, and back to A. These techniques are going to be recycled throughout the song. Okay, it's gonna look and sound like this. jumping into the verse from there. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We're just taking an A major chord with a bar shape. That's gonna be the second fret of the D string, G string, and the B string, pressing that right up against the fret, and we're gonna strum. Down, up, chuck, up, chuck, up, chuck, up. All right, we're counting. One and two and three and four and. All right, making sure that when I'm doing that chuck, I'm relieving the pressure here on the left hand, so I'm deadening the strings, but I'm also driving the palm and the pick into those deadened strings for a nice percussive sound. So you put that together and we have one and two and three and four. We need to keep that chuck up pattern going for two more measures now. One and two and three and four and one and two. Then in the fourth and final measure of the intro section, we're just gonna play down, up, down, up, G, D. And then back to the A major chord, okay? You put all that together and we have real slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down, up, down, G, D. All right, and 
then right into the verse section where John's gonna come in with a nice shuffle pattern. Okay, very good everybody. You have that intro section down. Now we're jumping into the verse section. Let's start with George's part. Really, he's gonna be playing the exact same rhythm that he played in the intro section, but he's gonna be throwing in a D major chord after two measures of A major. So he's gonna play. Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner, but he knew he couldn't last. Then he's gonna repeat that again. Jojo left his home in Tucson, Arizona for some California grass. Get back. And then you jump into the chorus. So very, very simple. You have the A major chord, down up, chuck up, chuck. Then go to a D major chord, down up, chuck up, chuck up, chuck up, and then back to the A major chord, down up, chuck up, chuck up, chuck up. Repeat that whole thing again to complete that verse section if you're playing George's part. Now let's take a look at what John's playing. He's gonna be performing a nice shuffle pattern using a power chord, A on the fifth fret, and then D on the 10th fret. Sounds like this. throws in these nice kind of BB's box licks. All right, so we have an A5 power chord, fifth fret of the low E string, seventh fret of the A string. We're gonna be playing one and, then take your pinky and stretch it out to the ninth fret of the A string, and then back. Now you got the basic blues shuffle in the key of A. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, then take it up a fourth. So the 10th fret of the low E string is your root note. That's a D power chord. One and two and three and four and then we're gonna throw in this nice lick. Okay, so that was ninth fret of the G string sliding up to 11, then 10 on the B, 12 bending up a full step, then with your pinky, we're gonna grab the 12th fret of the high E string, release the bend, go down to 10 again, and then finish up right here on the 11th fret of the G string. Real slow. All right, put that into the context of these power chords we have. One and two. repeat that twice through. Okay, very good everybody. Now jumping into the chorus section, let's get started with George's part. It's gonna be very similar to what he played in the verse section. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one, two, three, get back. simple. It's very similar to what he played in the verse section. It starts off with that A major chord, down up, scratch 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 up. Then we're gonna go to a D major chord, down up, scratch up, scratch up, scratch up. And then we're back to the A chord, measure four of the first half of the chorus, where we're gonna throw in that A, G, D chord change. Here's another way you can strum that. You can play down up, scratch Jump. That scratch being that percussive hit. And then followed by the G, to the D, and then back to the A chord. And that G chord, by the way, you don't have to fret the major third of the chord, second fret of the A string. It's very common in rock music just to mute the A string altogether and play it as a three finger chord. You put that together and we have the first half of the chorus, George's part. One, two, three, four. Get back, get back, get back to where you once belong. All right, from there, we're gonna have a change in the beat. So the guitar is going to respond, playing A to A7. And 
then from there it's verbatim, D. Then A, scratch, G, D, A. And then from there we're going into the guitar solo if you're playing chorus number one. Okay, so that little rhythm change over the A going to the A7 chord, we had that for two measures, we're playing. All right, the perfect way to respond to that section. Down, up, percussive hit, followed by an upstroke on the A7 chord. Down, up, scratch, up, up, down, up. Down, up, scratch, up, up, down, up. And then, like I said, it's just verbatim from there, the D chord. A major chord, down, up, scratch, up, G, D. All right, and then that'll get you into the guitar solo if you're playing chorus number one. Now something I wanna mention, in choruses two and four, I believe, they throw in a variation. Instead of playing the G, D, and then back to the A chord, they're gonna throw in a C to D5 power chord chord change. All right, so that's the third fret of the A string, fifth fret of the D string, all right, strum those two notes together, and then move it up a full step with an upstroke, making sure to mute the other strings. All right, so. Now to fit that in rhythmically, we're gonna play from the second half of the chorus, one and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four, and it's off the D chord. One and two and three and All right, it's a little tricky getting there. One and two. And then from there, Billy Preston's gonna play a little lick to get you into another section. Okay, now let's take a look at what John's playing during the chorus. It's a very cool classic riff being built from the major pentatonic scale in its D-shaped position. All right, and you can always tell you're playing a major pentatonic scale because it sounds like my girl. All right, just a tip there. So John's riff is gonna look and sound like this. Starting with A. and he repeats that twice through. All right, so very, very simple. We're sliding from seven up to nine on the low E string, to seven on the A, up to nine, and then to seven on the D string. That's the first part of the riff. Stop there and practice. All right, from there, we're going to take a A7 chord shape. All right, and I like to strum down, up, down, up. Then you might hear John throw in a few extra strokes here and there. Okay, so I have the seventh fret of the D string, the ninth fret of the G, the eighth fret of the B, and the ninth fret of the high E string. Just a D7 chord shape, plus a root. You add that into the mix and we have. All right, from there we're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to use the chord D7 barring the D string, G string, and B string of the seventh fret and the eighth fret of the high E string with the middle finger. All right, you add that riff to it. And then you're back to the A chord. All right, you put that together and we play it twice through and we have John's part for the chorus. One, two, three, four, and... some sections where John's gonna change it up a little bit and just stick to that shuffle so it'll be get back get back get back to where you once belong one and two and and then throw in some power chords for that G to D chord change so third fret power chord low E fifth fret power chord on the A string get back Okay, very good everybody. You have the intro, you have the verse, and you have the chorus sections. That sums up basically everything you need to learn uh, as far as rhythm guitar parts. Now we're gonna jump into the final stop for this lesson, John's guitar solos.
Okay, getting started with guitar solo number one. Underneath of it, George is playing basically part number one of the chorus section. And over that, John is playing. <laughs> Okay, so our first lick is being played over two measures of A major. Once again, it sounds like this. All right, and that's coming from this position of the A major pentatonic scale off the 12th fret of the A string. Which also overlaps with your BB's box solo in position. Okay, the lick one more time. All right, you got it into your ear now. We're sliding from the ninth fret of the G string up to 11. And then we're gonna play 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, then the 12th fret of the B string. Then again, bending it up a full step. Grabbing 12 of the high E before releasing the bend. Now going down to 10 on the B, 11 on the G, and then back to 10 with a slide away. Put that together and we have. All right, now as the D chord comes in, he's gonna play. making his way down to the A minor pentatonic scale. All right, so I slid seven up to nine on the A string, seven on the D, up to nine, and then seven on the G. I like to do a slight bend there. Before going down to the fifth fret of the G string. All right, that was five, seven, five in that A minor pentatonic box. All right, you put that together and we have part number one of the solo. Okay, now onto the second half of solo number one. It looks and sounds like this. So a lot of repetition there. All right, so like before, we're sliding up nine to 11 on the G string. Next, we're gonna play 10, 10, 10, 10, 12 to finish up the first measure. And that's got a very specific rhythm to it. From there, it's gonna be verbatim just like before, bending it up. Same lick over D. Now he's gonna throw in a very cool kind of manic lick to finish things up. All right, this is really tough to figure out, but I think I have it right. It's going to be the seventh fret of the B string, bend it up about a half step, down to five, then to the G string seven down to five, and then bend in on the G string seventh fret. From there we're gonna play to finish up the lick, five, seven, five. You put that together and we have real slow. All right, and it's very important that you keep your alternate picking going. All right, with that lick, we finished up the solo. You put it all together and we have. Part two. finish solo number one. Okay, now the final stop for today's lesson, solo number two. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one, two, three, four, and. Okay, 
Okay, breaking that down measure by measure, getting started with this cool little chicken picking effect. All right, so there, John is playing in the first measure of the solo, a slide up to the 11th fret of the G string, then to the 10th fret of the B. From there, he's going to play a dead note, followed by the 10th fret three times. Then 12-12. From there, he's gonna bend it up. And then play the exact same lick that he played before in the first solo. Over the D chord, he plays the same thing. And then right here in this first half of the solo, he's going to reintroduce that same manic lick plus an extra bend on the seventh fret of the G string. For sliding back up into the BB's box solo in position. All right, you put that together and we have the first half of guitar solo number two. Okay, now jumping into the second half, it's gonna look and sound like this. Okay, using the same notes, he's gonna play. That's that first measure of the second half, sliding up to 11, then 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, followed by 12, 12. That gets you into the next measure where you're gonna bend. All right, that was the 12th fret, bending up a full step. 12 again, bending and returning. Going down to 10. And then the 11th fret of the G string, followed by another bend on the 12th fret of the B string. You put that together and we have, you gotta get it into your ear. All right, from there, he's just gonna play. All right, that was 10, going up to 12 with the bend and then repeating. All right, that's three measures of music. All right, then finally, to finish the solo, he's going to play the exact same rhythm that he played here, but he's gonna play it in the BB's box. All right, so that was 12th fret of the B string, down the 10, 11 on the G, and then back to the 10th fret of the B string. Repeat that again, before bending the 12th fret of the B string up about a quarter step to finish the solo. All right, you put all that together, and we have guitar solo number two. Just like that, if you can play it, then congrats, you're ready to perform. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this Get Back Guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash book lessons. I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.